Greetings, everyone, and welcome. My name is Alex with the Climate Science Alliance, and today we are going to explore the Climate Kids Food Systems module to better understand how climate change is impacting the food system on a regional level here in Southern California, how climate smart agricultural practices can help offset the impacts of climate change, and the role we play at the intersection of climate, food, and agriculture. Our global climate and the food that we eat every day are inextricably linked. In this lesson, we will explore our food system and the role it plays in our changing climate, and alternatively, how climate change will impact our food, how it's produced, transported, and more. If you have checked out our Climate Kids Traveling Trunk for this module, there are several associated hands-on science experiments and demonstrations to supplement this presentation, some of which can be found on the Climate Kids Connects interface. There will be places to pause throughout today's presentation if you would like to participate. Before we begin our exploration into the food system, it's important that we take a step back and better understand the basis of our food, and all life for that matter, and that is carbon. Carbon is a magic element that comprises everything on Earth. It is the building block for every biological compound, including plants, animals, and even us as humans. Carbon compounds help to regulate the Earth's temperature, make up the food that sustains us, and provides a major source of energy to fuel our global economy. In different forms, carbon cycles through our Earth's system, from the soil and the plants, to animals, the atmosphere, and the ocean. Carbon can be found everywhere. Most of the Earth's carbon is stored in rocks and sediments, while the rest is located in the ocean, atmosphere, and in living organisms. The reservoirs are containers to which carbon cycles are known as the atmosphere, the lithosphere, the biosphere, and the hydrosphere. You can pause here, if you have the traveling trunk, to complete the understanding of the carbon cycle activity. Plants play a special role in the carbon cycle by way of photosynthesis. Plants are called autotrophs because they can use energy from light to synthesize or make their own food. Many people believe they are feeding, quote unquote, a plant when they put it in the soil, water, and place it outside in the sun. But none of these things are considered food. Rather, plants use sunlight, water, and the gases in the air to make glucose, which is a form of sugar that plants need to survive. This process is called photosynthesis, and it's performed by all plants, algae, and even some microorganisms. To perform photosynthesis, plants need three important things, carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. Plants take in and use carbon dioxide gas for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide enters through tiny holes in a plant's leaves, flowers, branches, stems, and roots. Plants also require water to make their food. The last requirement for photosynthesis is an important one because it provides the energy to make the sugar or glucose. How does a plant take carbon dioxide and water molecules and make a few food molecule? The sun, of course. The energy from light causes a chemical reaction that breaks down the molecules of carbon dioxide and water and reorganizes them to make the sugar, or glucose, and oxygen gas. After the sugar is produced, it is then broken down by the mitochondria into energy that can be used for growth and repair. The oxygen that is produced is released from the same tiny holes through which the carbon dioxide entered. Even the oxygen that is released serves another purpose. Other organisms, such as animals, use oxygen to aid in their survival, just like you and me. The whole process of photosynthesis is a transfer of energy from the sun to a plant. In each sugar mo molecule created, there's a little bit of the energy from the sun, which the plant can either use or store for later. By photosynthesis, plants are a key component to the carbon cycle and can work to put carbon back into the earth. The ability of plants to retain carbon dioxide in their tissues and carbon in the ground is important now more than ever. Since the Industrial Revolution, humans have excelled at removing carbon dioxide from the earth and putting it into the atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels to run cars and factories. Carbon dioxide, also known as a greenhouse gas, has increased in the earth's atmosphere significantly and created a heat-trapping effect on the earth. As the earth warms, there are significant climate impacts that we see every day, such as the ice caps melting, the seas rising, and more and more extreme storm events. 
here in our region of Southern California, we will see the impacts of our changing climate in several different ways. Regarding temperature, we'll see an annual and daily average temperature ranges increase and will become more extreme. For precipitation or rain, we will see these events becoming more intense and variable than they ever were before. We also experience wildfire. Large, high-intensity fires will increase in frequency. And most importantly, drought, where we see the number of dry days will increase and become more intense. When thinking about the impacts of climate change on the food system, it is important to understand that the food system is complex and there are many different ways that climate impacts can interfere. A food system, by definition, includes all processes and infrastructure involved in feeding a population, whether that be growing, harvesting, processing, packaging, transporting, marketing, consumption, and disposal of food and food-related items. It also includes the inputs needed and outputs generated at each of these steps. As a sector that is greatly dependent on climate and highly sensitive to environmental conditions, especially those regarding water resources, Agriculture is exceptionally vulnerable to the effects of a warming world. With ongoing shifts in natural processes that dictate agricultural practices, productivity, and costs, the future of agriculture is one with distinct and palpable challenges. Because the effects of climate change on agriculture are highly dependent on variables such as climate, geography, soils, and customary agricultural practices, the net impact felt by regions will vary greatly. In some areas, it is project projected that climate change may result in beneficial consequences for agriculture, while in others, consequences could be detrimental. Projections of changing climate conditions, specifically increased variability of precipitation and temperature, will have many implications for the region's agricultural lands and the farmers that sustain these lands. Changes in temperature and precipitation and corresponding increases in extreme events and drought will play a large role in the future of regional and statewide agriculture. These changes could have major impacts for crops, productivity, and yields, soils and natural resources, and pests, pollinators, weeds, all of which could result in potential economic or financial impacts. Furthermore, Increased climate variability will make adaptation increasingly difficult for the farming community. Ongoing changes such as the timing and frequency of precipitation, reduced snowpack levels, and earlier snowmelt present several challenges for the region's water resources. These water-related challenges are inextricably linked to the overall functioning and viability of agriculture and are thus paramount in determining the persistence and growth of San Diego and Southern California agriculture. Moving beyond the terrestrial realm, climate change may also significantly impact marine food resources. Although the intake of carbon dioxide into marine ecosystems is a natural process, scientists are observing significant impacts of too much carbon dioxide entering the system. Research has shown that increased amounts of CO2 from human activity are changing the climate, and impacts like warming ocean temperatures and ocean acidification make it difficult for animals to adapt. With increasingly acidified seas, species are having difficulty growing, and their shells are becoming weaker, thinner, and in some cases, dissolving. Impacts such as this can result in drastic repercussions, not only for marine ecosystems, but for animals and humans that rely on these species for food and their livelihood. While our changing climate will have significant impacts to agriculture and food systems in the form of variable temperature, rainfall, and more, the food system also has a significant, if not the most significant, impact on our global climate. Critical to the relationship between climate change and natural landscapes is understanding the contribution of agriculture to increasing greenhouse gases and, in turn, climate change. Degrading and eroding soil from intense grazing, plowing, and clear-cutting has throughout time played a significant role in the increased concentration of atmospheric greenhouse gases. Long-term degradation of important features of natural land, such as soils, forests, and wetlands, is one of the key drivers of a warming world. Relative emissions and impact, however, vary with region, regional dependency on soil properties and agricultural practices. 
In the San Diego region, agriculture contributes approximately 5% of total county emissions. In general, most farm-related carbon dioxide emissions result from a variety of soil, livestock, and manure management practices, including soil tillage, overgrazing, farm equipment, livestock, and fertilizer use. San Diego County and Southern California farmers play an important role in enhancing climate resilience across their own agricultural lands as well as the region's human and natural communities. Recent research and local case studies highlight several climate-smart agricultural strategies that producers can implement to significantly buffer and mitigate these growing challenges. These climate-smart agricultural practices, some of which are shown here, help to keep carbon in the ground and help plants to continue to sequester it more efficiently. To learn more about Climate Smart Agricultural Practices, we invite you to visit the Resource Conservation District website. Over the course of this lesson, we have gained understanding on how climate change is impacting the food system on a regional level and how Climate Smart Agricultural Practices can help offset the impacts of climate change. The food system is complex with many moving pieces and components and climate change impacting them all in different ways. But fortunately, there is much that you can do to help. As a climate kid, we play a significant role at the intersection of climate, food, and agriculture. We have learned lots of solutions today in the form of climate smart practices, but there are solutions and choices that we can all make every day to help the world become a safer and more enjoyable place for all. Things such as saving water, recycling, eating your veggies, a Climate Kids 10 Things is a really great way to start. What commitment will you help to make the earth a better place and lower the impacts of our changing climate? Thank you so much for joining us for this exploration of climate science and the food system. For more information, we invite you to visit us at www.climatesciencealliance.org or www.climatekids.org. Thanks so much and have a great day.